Hi, I'm Jim Skelly. I'm very, very sorry that I was not able to join you today in Leiden. Um, I tried to speak to the people who control the volcanoes, but uh, <clears throat> they said Mother Nature was insistent and that was it. Um, I hope it hasn't disrupted uh, too many of your plans or the plans of your friends. Um, I'm here talking to you by video. I really wish I was there in person. Um, I'm here talking to you by video because it seems to me the course I'm about to talk to you about, the global conversation, is one that students involved with Ajay um, would make a natural fit with. I've talked a lot with Christian Heikenmuller about this, and I must say that it seems to me it, it fits very much with the kinds of interests that I think many of you have. At any rate, um, I'm going to take you a little bit through it, uh, piece by piece, and um, I hope you'll get a sense for it, and if any of you are interested in taking the course when we start it again in September, uh, please contact me. Um, now, I'll tell you a little bit about that course, and also give you a, a sense of some of the things that we're trying to do with it, and then suggest a couple of other things that you may take a look at over the next uh, better part of an hour or so. The global conversation looks at how we've been living on the planet, the fact that that's not sustainable, and that we have to change the way we're living. This past semester, we had 45 students studying in or from 20 different countries, Argentina, Belarus, Cameroon, to Turkey, Ukraine, and the US. Right? We try to take a contextual approach to the problems that we're facing, and we try to ask the question, how ought I to live? What should I do? So to give you some sense of this contextual approach and to get you thinking about it, I want to present to you 25 questions and see if you in your own minds don't connect the dots. Because it's connecting the dots and seeing that it's the way we're living that's important. Here's the first question. When a baby is born, is the child's blood pure? When a baby is born, the child's blood probably has over 200 industrial chemicals and pollutants in it, such as Teflon, Scotchgard, and flame retardants. This has consequences, as you might imagine. Um, the second question, what is a nurdle? A nurdle is a plastic Pearl, that the first pro that's the first product of the industrial manufacture of plastic. 20 kilos of nurdles are produced annually for every person on the planet. It's a lot of plastic, and there's a lot of plastic everywhere. Worldwide, for example, how many disposable plastic bags are produced every minute? Anybody want to guess? Well, it's a lot. Worldwide, about 1 million disposable plastic bags are produced every minute or 60 million every hour. Think about what that means. How many uh, plastic bottles are produced in the United States annually? 25 billion single-serving plastic water bottles are produced in the US every year. 20 billion of these are not, I say again, not recycled. So in uh, Question number five, why did a 20 meter long dead blue whale wash up on the beach in California in 2007? Well, we don't know, but 200 kilos of plastic was found in the whale's stomach. What is bisphenol or BPA? Bisphenol, BPA, is an endocrine disruptor and has been linked to heart disease, diabetes, and various forms of cancer. Epoxy resins containing BPA are used as coatings on the inside of globe, almost all food and beverage cans. Global production was 2 million metric tons. What is India doing about migrants from Bangladesh? India is building a wall 4,000 kilometers long and 3 meters high along its border with Bangladesh because Bangladesh is going to disappear as climate change affects things. How many illegal migrants from Africa have died at sea in the last 20 years trying to get to Spain? Anybody want to guess that? Horrible figure. 
approximately 11,000 people died at sea trying to get to Spain. Thousands more tried to die trying to get into other countries as well. What is happening to the Ogallala Aquifer? The Ogallala Aquifer is under the Great Plains of the United States and produces, um, helps to produce about 20% of U.S. agricultural projects, products. It is now being depleted at a rate in significant excess of its recharge, and some estimates suggest that it will run dry in 25 years. How much snow cover do the Pyrenees Mountains now have in the summer compared to 100 years ago? Hmm. Not very much, I'm afraid. Only about 10% of what existed 100 years ago. Land in the Pyrenees used for agriculture has dropped from 30% to 2%. What is colony collapse disorder? Anybody have an idea about that? Colony collapse disorder is uh, the complete collapse of bee colonies. One third of our diet, of the human diet, comes from insect pollinated plants and bees are responsible for 80% of that pollination. Number 12, how many people on the planet go hungry every day? Anybody want to guess? Maybe you know. It's 1 billion people go hungry every day. It's about 15% of the world's population. In contrast, we live very well. How much food is thrown away every day in the United States and in the United Kingdom? Enough food is thrown away every day in the United States and the UK to feed 1.5 billion people. How many countries experienced food riots in 2008? 30 countries experienced food riots. How many sharks are killed every day to make Shark fin soup, a real delicacy. On average, just over 10,000 sharks per day are killed for shark fin soup. How many children die every day from polluted water? About 4,000 children die every day from polluted water. How much coal is mined every second? 100,000 kilos of coal is mined every second. How many cars does China add to its roads each day? China adds 14 to 15,000 additional cars to its roads every day. Days of grain supplies does the world have in reserve? About half of the 116 it had 10 years ago. And food prices are rising, as I think most of you know. How many kilos of grain does it take to produce one kilo of meat? It takes between 7 and 10 kilos of grain to produce just one kilo of meat. And yet we eat more and more of it on the planet. How many kilos of meat, for example, do the Americans eat annually? The Americans eat 125 kilos per capita every year. By 2030, how much more food will we need? About, according to the UK, 50% more food. Hmm. How much more energy are we going to need by 2030? We're going to need 50% more energy as well. By 2030, how much more water will we need? By 2030, we'll need 40% more water. And the final question, how many more people are there on our planet today as compared to yesterday? in excess of 200,000 people, or two more Leidens every day. I hope that's made you think uh, about context, the broader context for our lives, because unless we approach the problems we face from a contextual perspective, I don't think we're going to be able to solve them. 